It's springtime, which is lovely, but you know what's not great? Tax season. Because I know you guys love saving money just as much as I do. Today, I wanted to go through home buyer tax credits and deductions that you don't wanna miss. So let's get right into it. If you have a mortgage on your home, you can take advantage of mortgage interest deductions. A mortgage interest deduction allows you to lower your taxable income by writing off the mortgage interest that you are paying throughout the year. Now with this, of course, there are deduction limits. For a single filer, or if you are married filing jointly, you can deduct up to a maximum of $750,000. If you are married filing separately, it's up to $375,000 for each party. Now with this, obviously, you know, $750,000 is a big amount, but keep in mind, you're only going to be able to write off the amount that you already paid throughout the year. So if I didn't pay $750,000 in mortgage interest, then I'm not going to be able to write that off. I would just be able to write off up to what I already had paid throughout the year or you know that limit if that is applicable to you. The best part about this deduction, in my opinion, is that this is something that you can take advantage of every single year, because as long as you have a mortgage, you are paying mortgage interest. That's where, you know, your interest rate comes into play. Every single month, a portion of that payment goes straight to the bank in interest, and you can write that off. A home equity loan is essentially a second mortgage on your house. With a home equity loan, you're able to access the equity that you have in your home and use it as collateral for borrowing funds against your home. Now, if you have these, you may be able to deduct the interest that you're paying on this as well. <laughs> there are a few rules with this. The first thing is this applies to both the home equity loans and the HELOCs, the home equity line of credits, but you can only make this deduction if you borrowed funds to pay for a home improvement. So if you went to the bank and you're like, I wanna take out a HELOC and I'm gonna use that fund for a boat, you're not gonna be able to write that off. So the money that you pull from this has to be used for a home improvement if you are hoping to write off the interest you've paid over the year against your taxes. I know that's a little tricky. So if you have questions about this, consult a tax professional. I am not a tax professional or CPA. Consult those people if you have questions. When you take out a mortgage to buy a house, you have the option to purchase discount points to lower your interest rate. You can also deduct discount points. There are limits to this as well. Points can only be deducted if they were purchased to reduce the mortgage interest rate. So the cost of the points can be deducted. So you, the extra amount that you paid to bring down your interest rate and bring down your monthly payment can be deducted. If these are points that you used towards a loan origination point, that cannot be deducted with the deduction available for discount points. Discount points paid will be reflected on your settlement statement or your HUD closing disclosure. So if you're not quite sure if you paid those for your closing or bought down your interest rate, review your closing disclosure and you'll find that information. This would just be applicable to people who have bought a house in 2022 because those are the taxes that you're working on. A not so fun aspect of owning a home is property taxes. Obviously, as a homeowner, you're subject to, in most cases, both federal and state property taxes. Depending on your location, property tax deductions can be extremely valuable. So there are deduction limits with this. If you are married filing jointly, you can deduct up to $10,000 on your taxes because of the amount you paid in property taxes. If you are single or married filing separately, that is up to $5,000. Of course, you're not gonna deduct more than you personally paid. So look at those numbers yourself. This is like the maximum. Did you guys know that necessary home improvements can also qualify for deductions? But there are some caveats here. If you decide to go ahead and upgrade your fully functioning kitchen, obviously that would not qualify as a necessary improvement. So what are some qualifying examples? Home improvement for medical reasons is the main one here. That would be necessary for the medical care of somebody living in the house. So some examples are wheelchair ramp. 
widening the doorways in a home, installing a special shower or rails in the bathroom, if there's any modifications needed for a staircase because of somebody. Those are all necessary improvements that could be deducted when it comes to tax time. If your home improvements meet certain energy efficient standards, you may qualify for the residential energy efficient property credit. This tax credit allows property owners to receive a credit that is equal to a certain percentage of the energy efficient improvement or equipment that was added to the home. There are a few eligible improvements for the residential clean energy credit. This would involve solar electric, solar water heaters, geothermal heat pumps, small wind turbines, and fuel cells. So with these, you would get 30 to 22% of the cost of those improvements as a tax credit. Where are all my entrepreneurs and self-employed business owners at? raise your hands. I've got some good news for you, potentially. If you operate a business in your residence, you may be able to deduct some of the expenses of maintaining the space that you use for your business. If you only use the home office for when it's convenient or for just working from home for your employer, that will not qualify. Some qualifying examples would be one room in your home exclusively used for your alterations business, let's say. Your alteration business does not have an outside office outside of your home. So this would be like the exclusive office that you use for your business. Let's say you run an Amazon reselling business as well. You don't have an office outside of your home, but you have one specific designated space inside your home for running that business, then you would be able to write off essentially a portion of the costs associated with keeping up that space as a home office. Private mortgage insurance or PMI is often a nasty word when it comes to real estate. A lot of people get freaked out about having a little bit of an extra payment on their monthly payment with an FHA or a conventional loan with less than 20% down payment. However, your mortgage insurance can actually be deducted on your itemized tax return. Now, this does not include any type of homeowner's insurance. The amount that you paid over the year in mortgage insurance should also be available on that 1098 form that you will likely get from your mortgage company. So without a doubt, owning a home comes with a whole financial suite of benefits. If you're a homeowner, it's definitely worth taking the time to explore some potential tax deductions. This can save you thousands of dollars and bring down your taxable income. If you need help with your specific situation or have detailed questions about the deductions available for homeowners, make sure to reach out to a tax professional. That way you are going to be able to ensure that you are cashing in on all of the deductions available to you. If you have any additional questions about this, let me know in the comments below and I will try to point you in the right direction. Of course, for more videos about saving money while buying a house or when tax season rolls around, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. I'm Nicole Nark, Arkansas real estate broker with videos to help you find your way home and I will see you in the next one.